Well, we all teach flame tests in our chemistry classes. We talk about the fact that the transition metals, when we put them in a flame, the electrons are excited and we, can, and we can talk about the charge on the nucleus and how since the nucleus is positive and the electrons are negative, we have to add energy to pull the electron out. And it's a little like a spring. It's unstable at a higher potential energy. So the electron drops back down and we observe visible light for the transition metals. And if they use a diffraction grating, they can try to see some lines, but they really don't see them very clearly. They do, I'm sorry, they do see emission lines clearly, but those are bright lights, bright lines of color on a dark background. Well, in order for those electrons to go to a higher energy level, they have to absorb energy. So when we're talking about the fact that this energy is quantized, that there's only certain wavelengths that can be absorbed on the way out, that's quantized, of course, and normally we can't show the students. And we talk about it being a fingerprint for every single element, that each of them has a unique emission spectrum because you've got a different charge on the nucleus, so you've got different attraction, you're going to need different amounts of energy. And what we miss on that is the kids are used to just seeing the electron on the way out, or excuse me, on the way back. But I'd like to be able to show them the electron absorbing energy. If you look at the diagram, okay, if you're looking at the emission spectrum, we explain the different colors in terms of the uh, amount of energy released that the further the electron drops, the more energy it took to move it out, so the more energy it's going to release on the way back, and that's the reason for the different colors. Well, obviously, on the absorption end, it should be complementary to that, the same amount of energy to make the same transition. But this time, what we want to look at is the energy absorbed. In spectrophotometry, we're always looking at absorption spectrums. So I like this next demonstration because it actually gives me an opportunity to show an absorption spectrum to my students. By way of just explaining this setup to you, there is a piece of diffraction grating that comes in the Flynn kit that I'm using. And you need to put it in front of the overhead, and then you just adjust it so that you have a spectrum that's going to be horizontal. So if it's not right, turn it the other way. And just tape it in front of the lens. And on the platform, all I've done is put two pieces of paper and left a slit. And you can see where the light's coming through right there. Okay, that's all you need to do. It doesn't need to be black paper. All we're doing is blocking the light. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you some colored solutions. And we're going to look at the color of the light that's transmitted, what we see with our eye, and then what's missing. That's the color of light that's absorbed. All right, so if you would turn the lights down for me. Okay, for the potassium permanganate solution, I could put it in the middle there. Okay, you can see where I've got the potassium permanganate here. On the screen, you can see that it's absorbing strongly in the green-yellow region, right? Green-yellow for potassium permanganate. I'm going to put copper 2-chloride up there and the copper 2 chloride solution is blue and we see that that's absorbing strongly in the red region. Okay. Now, we don't really have to use actual solutions, we're just trying to get the colors. And so for red, I'm going to take a, um, just a filter and you could use food coloring, but with that red filter you can see that red is filtering out the the blue and the violet, the green area. And if I took yellow, that the yellow is filtering out the violet. Okay, if we can have the lights up for a minute. And I'm going to walk over to this chart. What the students are going to observe is that you've got complementary colors. So if a solution absorbs green, it appears red. 
Okay, so the red solution appeared green, but it transmitted the red. And if I have a, a yellow solution, okay, it's absorbing in the blue-violet range. Now, with those solutions, they're not pure colors, so it's going to be just a little bit more div 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 spread out, diffuse. But this chart can be used for predicting colors that you would expect to see absorbed. So if I have a solution that is a pale pink, that's in the red region, I would expect, because pink is really dilute red, right? I would expect to see absorption in this green area here. Okay, I'm going to take a solution of erbium chloride. And erbium chloride is one of those rare earth metals at the bottom of the table, involves F electrons, and the kids never see things like that. The neat thing about these is that the F electrons can be excited by visible light. So for the transition metals where we're using D transitions, we needed a flame to excite them. We actually, with the F electrons, the energy differences are small enough that visible light can excite them. So if I come over here now, I'm going to show you what erbium chloride looks like on the overhead. And if you take the lights out for me, I'm just going to move this paper down for a minute. All right, do you see those absorption lines in the green region? Remember, it was a pink solution. This is the fingerprint for erbium chloride. If a chemist saw those lines, and I don't know if you can see there is a line in the red region as well, far over into the red, okay, they would be able to identify that that solution contained erbium. So when we're doing spectrophotometry with our students, we can explain why we scan the spectrum to figure out what wavelengths of light are being absorbed strongly by the solution. And erbium, because it's that pale pink, is absorbing in, that gr in the green region. But we also are getting some other lines. Now, I have praseodymium, and I'm going to put the praseodymium on top of the erbium chloride. And look at the difference there. Okay, it's very clear that we have two entirely different compounds because they have different absorption spectrums. And I really like this demonstration with my advanced classes, but I use it also with my introductory class. We've spent a lot of time talking about these electrons moving between ground state and excited state, and I like to be able to show them that the flame test, I'm looking at emission, I'm looking at bright lines of color on a dark background, but with absorption, I'm looking at dark lines in a continuous spectrum, the missing energy. And I can make connections to other kind of real world applications of spectrophotometry. And this demo is just, well, the first time I saw it, I couldn't believe it because I'd never before been able to see absorption lines like that. Only with the rare earth metals can you do it. So uh, the Flynn kit contains praseodymium chloride and erbium chloride. And um, I really highly recommend you using this. Thanks.